First of all, Mike Norvell has a fantastic football team, and it's going to be interesting to see going down the stretch in the ACC how this thing uh, finishes. Us being 0-3 in conference, we're not going to be a part of that. But us being 4-3 and and having an opportunity to finish our season strong, we're excited about having the opportunity after we get in a bye week and get some guys healthy and hopefully get, get, our, get, our, get a whole bunch of people back so that we can make this final stretch uh, and finish it with a fantastic season. Okay. Questions? We'll start with Emily in front and then go to Henry. Uh, Garrett was pulled early in the fourth quarter. Was that like just him being shaken up? I know he's taken some big hits, or was that a performance thing? No, the uh, main thing is uh, Garrett came down with food poisoning before the game. So, and uh, he was extremely dehydrated. We were trying to keep him hydrated. Um, if you even watched him, I mean, he's just at halftime, he was just all sweat and all that kind of stuff, and he had it coming out of everywhere. So uh, it was one of those things where we were trying to keep him going, trying to keep him going, but then it just came to a point where he was just getting too weak in the game, and we just needed to make a change. It was like a past 24 hours, like he ate something bad for dinner last night? It was last night, yeah. Um, just aside from this game and just the past few games, what do you think have just been some of the issues just on offense, just not scoring as much points as, say, the first four games? And the defense has a lot of NFL players on it. That's been the biggest issue. Is it also just loss of depth as well as the season's gone along? Loss of depth? Like, like or loss of like players just due to injuries and stuff? The, whoever the injuries are are the injuries. We can't make excuses for that. Every football team has injuries. What we got to do is we got to find a way to make things happen with the people we have out there. Now, they're not, you know, they're not all the people that you want, but we've got other people. And there's ways that you can lean it one way or another to help them out as much as you can. No. Fourth, or first drive of the game that short fourth down, how much consideration did you think about going for that one? I would, I definitely thought about it. I did. It was just, it was too early and too close. And I could just envision an explosive offense coming back. So no, I pointed it. I think it was like the 30 something yard line and it was like one or two. Now we ended up doing, I thought decent on short yardage, but I just didn't know what the picture was going to be right there. Stay in that row. Coach, you knew this three-game stretch was probably going to be the toughest you had all season. How did the results compare to what you expected before? No, did not expect it to be this dominating. But, but there, I knew they were good teams. I knew they were good teams. But uh, when you play them, you really realize how good they are. There is a, like I said in the last interview, or I think on Thursday night, there's three supposedly three number one draft picks on that football field, and I'm I'm not sure. I've been on a couple of teams that's had that, so. Uh, it was really impressive. Even watching them move around, their size, their speed, their quickness, they were dominating. We'll go back to Emily in front and then Sydney. Another fourth down situation, the fourth and six, kind of deep within Florida State's territory. How much did you consider going for it there? And did anyone on your offense try to pitch you on let us stay out there? No, they didn't try to pitch me on making it stay out there, and I didn't think about it. Sydney, the second row. A quick turnaround going into next, well, actually, a longer turnaround going into next week's game. How do you feel like the team can really take these last few games and start to develop, you know, lessons from the losses? The biggest thing is healing. I mean, you get a bye, and first thing everybody wants to do is practice them every single day, and and it's, you have to, you have to fight that. You have to really fight that. This is their only opportunity they're going to get to heal. It's really the only opportunity they're going to get a chance to go home and see their families on the weekend, which is important, you know, to get around mom and dad and all that kind of stuff, and then get back here for the stretch. So um, we, we really have to restrain from going with your first instincts. Let them rest, let them heal, and get a healthy team coming back for the stretch. We'll go right here in the WAR. Uh, what impressed you the most about Jordan Travis and Keon Coleman today? <sighs> you know, he really got out of some jams with his legs and then we, you know, we hit him a couple of times early. It didn't phase him. He got back up, got back in the pocket. Uh, he's a really good player. And if you said somebody else, all I'm thinking about is that quarterback. So you're gonna have to ask the question again. Did you mention anybody else yeah, besides Keon him? Coleman? <laughs> <laughs> is that the one that was making the moves and cutting and back one and with one handed catch, catch and then came down? Yeah. Looked like he was a gymnast or something like that. <laughs> Yeah, God was showing off when he made him. That was extremely athletic. I do remember those plays.
Florida State's offense before this game was 100% in the red zone, scoring every single trip. What did you think of those two defensive stops you guys had in the red zone? Our, our defense played with a lot of pride today. And, uh, uh, you know, things happen eventually. When you're going out there and you're going out there and you don't see touchdowns on the other end, there's no doubt that they can get down. But uh, I thought they fought for the most part for the entire day. So I think that was a light somewhere in what happened today. I guess adding on to that, just like with the offense like sputtering, especially in the first half and second half, was it really starting to like wear on the defense? And could you see that on the sidelines? Yeah, but then you 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 see uh, LaQuint going for 100 yards against a defense with all those NFL draft choices in it, and watch this, and behind the offensive line that's you know not at full strength. So I mean, there was there was still some fight going on out there. I didn't, I didn't see any quitting the guys. Go to Emily and then go second row. Uh, you mentioned LaQuint obviously having a 100 yard rushing game. Were you guys planning? I thought it was 100. Did he get 100? Yeah, yeah, I think it was like 110. Okay. Um, had you guys been planning to use him that much going into this game, or did it just kind of shake out that way? No, we, we saw some teams that could do some things running the ball. Um, we felt that LaQuint might make up the difference. We might have, may not have to block everybody completely. But if you gave gave LaQuinn a crack, he'd be able to take it. And I thought he uh, he measured up extremely well with the rest of the guys that were out there on the football field. Middle. You you mentioned the talent you guys have faced the last couple of weeks, being Clemson and North Carolina and Florida State. What can you guys do as a program to work to get closer to that level uh, of being you know more competitive in games like that? You guys, you're talking about a total. Those guys are. It's totally different. You're comparing stuff. We need to work on us and get better on us. And if we slowly work on us, then eventually we can build up to that. But to say you're going to be there overnight, wow. Is there a message that you give to your team at some point between now and next Thursday about galvanizing for this final stretch run? Just got through giving it. You want to give a little bit of a... No. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think you would. Back to Emily in front. So you say just now it's about making improvements in yourself and getting stuff better. What what needs to get better about this offense? Like obviously, like you have been playing against difficult defenses, but there are things that need to improve within this offense as well, correct? The things, things they're going to improve in the offense is the defenses that they're going against. All of a sudden, those passes they're going to be knocked down where guys were wide open, and all you saw was the defensive lineman knocking the pass down without jumping to show you how long they are. Now those passes are going to go through, and they're going to, we're going to find out if the receiver is going to catch the ball or not. But those receivers were open. You're going to see more time based off who the D-line D line you're playing. The quarterback's going to be able to make more decisions, second, third, fourth decision. I'd be very surprised if the offense does not go back to exactly the way it looked previously. That's what I'm anticipating. Take a couple more for Coach, if anybody's got them. Right here. There's a few number of penalties today. Can you talk about your team's discipline? You noticed that she didn't bring that up. Yeah. I tweeted <laughs> 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 that you guys had zero penalties. Uh, that was nice. We, we felt that there were certain things we saw on tape where some people were going to be attacked for their discipline or lack of discipline, and uh, we challenged the kids really hard on that. They did a good job on that.